Hey guys, Fuzzy Knob here. In uh, this video, I'm going to be using IDA 5.0, the lab 09-01.exe from the Practical Malware Analysis uh, Binaries Collection. And uh, that's about it. So this is the free version of IDA, so if you want to follow around, uh, along, you should be able to. And I'm just going to get started. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is tracing um, command line arguments and interpreting the way IDA displays that kind of information to us. Now, uh, first things to notice in this binary is here we are in the main function, and there are possibly a variable and three arguments. Now, this to me looks immediately suspicious, and I wish there was a way to say, like, this is suspicious. But, um, like, if we look right here, this arg0 is being compared with 1, and that kind of, like, is a tip-off. Um, but basically, here's how you know uh, that this is wrong. And let me tell you, this is wrong, by the way. If we come to main, and we uh, follow cross-references by hitting uh, control x and then I just hit enter, we can see right before the call to main, uh, argc, argv get pushed onto the stack, and eax, which has exception info in it. And Ida has correctly identified this, but inside the main function, these have not been named correctly on the stack. So what we can do to easily name them is uh, come up here to the main function and press Y. And then since it's already filled in for us, we can just press Enter, and you see that uh, yes, that it renamed the uh, three functions here. And var4 is still a local variable. And then we have argc, argv, and environmental uh, variable information. Okay, so what to do with each of these? Argc, if you're not already familiar, is the argument count that is at least going to be one because, the, because argv is always going to have a uh, an array of at least one element, and the one element is uh, the path of the program that we're running. So it's like the first argument is always the program itself. Now, argc is the like integer representing how many items are in the array argv. So argc is always going to be at least one. So this compare here is checking to see if argc is equal to one or actually not equal because it's jump not zero. So basically, if argc is 1, it is not going to jump. It's going to take this negative path here. And we can see down here uh, some other functions get called. It makes some decision. Uh, it's not what we're talking about at the moment. So I'm going to come back up here. Now, if there isn't one argument, we can see argc going to zoom in on this little function here. So the value in argc is being moved into eax. Argv is being moved into ecx. And then we can see eax highlighted also here and ecx are being used. And then times 4 basically gives us uh, like alignment and minus 4 says, uh, so what this is basically doing is getting the last element. Okay, so this, uh, this line of code here, uh, this is probably going to be easiest to show you by showing you and explain this. So I'm actually going to go into general really quick and turn on line prefixes. And I'm going to copy this memory address right here. I'm going to open up Ollie Debug, and I'm going to drop lab09-01 into here. I'm going to press Control G to go there, paste in my memory address, put a breakpoint there. I'm also going to go to Debug Arguments, and at the command line, I'm just going to put some random stuff because I don't know what is supposed to be here. says you have command line arguments, you need to restart things, so I'm going to hit this double back arrow here to uh, restart everything, 
And then I'm going to press F9, and hopefully I hit my breakpoint. Luckily I did. So I'm right here at my breakpoint. And like you can see that this, uh, this command right here is the same as this command right here. Um, Ollie and Ida may display it slightly differently, but actually it looks like they did display it the same. So what we want to see is what actually ends up in EDX, what's in ECX, and what's in EAX. So EAX has six. And if we look here, arguments, I type A, B, C, D, E. That's five plus the path to the command uh, or to the program itself. So that makes six. So ECX, we can right click here, click follow and dump. And uh, we know that ECX has argv in it, and what argv is a is is a pointer to an array of memory addresses that point to each argument. So, if we, like I said, I already clicked here and I clicked follow and dump. So if we come down here, we see these bytes, but we don't really see anything too super useful. Um, doesn't it makes a lot more sense if we uh, right click and change the view from hex to long address. Now we can see like each address points clearly to each string. So ECX points here and then these really just kind of point slightly after where they're where we're looking at them. But um, you can see like here's the list of arguments. This is argv, the array of arguments. So like there's our path to our program. There's A, B, C, D, E. Cool. Now we execute this instruction by pressing F8 and EDX points to uh, EDX is D01 which is this pointer right here. So like EAX times 4 allows us to jump one address at a time because it's like um, it's, it's an offset so if there's six items times four that's going to like cover like jump from here to here to here for each one so this is the end and then minus four is this byte here from the end back to the beginning and that gets us our last item and that's what goes into EDX here Okay, I'm going to end this video here, and in the next video we're going to keep diving into uh, this function and take a look at what it does.